My name is Waylon Lewis, and I am here with Bree Wenke. We're going to be talking about art and all kinds of things. I am so excited. Me too. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I feel like I have the best job in the world because every single week I'm interviewing amazing people in wildly different arenas of what we call the mindful life. Yours, I don't remember how I came across you, but you are a visual artist. Is that how you would describe yourself? Yes, I'm a painter and uh, installation artist. And, uh, and that's one of your paintings right behind us, right? Yeah. A yeah. little hit of it, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So uh -huh. I saw your art, and then one of the first reels I watched was you hosting this, like, community gathering and this sort of video art installation. Does that sound mm. right? Mm-hmm. Yes, about a month ago, um, me and two fellow artists, good friends of mine, Sam Ruder and Morgan East, they're both uh, figurative artists as well. We all have a different style, though. The three of us wanted to put on our own independently curated exhibition here in Charleston, um, you know, uh, outside of any sort of institution so we could do exactly what we wanted. And uh, we wanted to create something for the community, something to provoke question and conversation and uh, just get people out doing something different. And, um, you know, a lot of bigger cities, you know, New York, obviously, and, you know, um, Denver, there's a lot of art installations, immersive things to go to and experience. And there's just none of that in Charleston, South Carolina, where I live. And, um, you know, it, it is the South and there's a lot of, there's a lot to, to kind of fight back against there still, unfortunately. And, um, you know, a in lot terms of, of like lack of connection to, to art events or, I mean, obviously there's bigger issues, bigger fish to fry in that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, um, if I'm just kind of being frank in the, in yeah. the art world there, there is, um, a decent contemporary art scene starting to, you know, pick up a little bit, but it's still really just traditional art. It's a lot of, bird paintings and marsh scenes and which is beautiful and beauty for the sake of beauty is completely valid yeah. but um there's just more to it you know art doesn't have to be just pretty and nice it can be a bit more thought evoking a bit more raw and um that's what our exhibition was about it was about grief and nostalgia and um we also had seth abramson he's a like a video projectionist and he created the immersive elements hmm. and um so it was, it was a really cool collaborative effort and we had like 700 people through, you know, the doors over the two nights. It was very successful and we felt really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I got that vibe from the uh, reel, you know. Um, we have tons of art in Boulder, surprisingly, because we're kind of small and tons of art events. And it reminded me of one of these art events you go to where the art is obviously the star on some level, but it's bigger than that. It's like, like a experience, it's community. It's meeting people you know or don't know. And, you know, there's, I felt like you were doing a real service for Charleston. Um, not, not just a, like a gallery event, you know? Yeah, it's, it's about more evoking like all the senses as best you can, right? Um, we curated the soundscape as well. We had a Preston Dunn event. He was our audio engineer and he kind of created the, the vibe, if you will, via soundscape and yeah. visuals and, um, you know, just, the overall mood when you walk in and just kind of shift shift everything and like have you be like what the hell is really going on but that's yeah. what we want we want some I want you to feel something to you know yeah yeah it was and a I think, really cool thing yeah you so you mentioned that word beauty which i think is um such a loaded word um mm -hmm. beauty and art um depicting beauty um often there's a lot of objectification of course in art um, so how do you think about, I mean, your paintings are incredibly, I don't know what the word is quite, they are beautiful in some way. There is beauty, there is power, but they're also very raw and, um, you know, it's hard to pick words that don't sound like cliches when they come out of my mouth, but evocative of some emotion. And I think you talk about emotion in terms of your art. So how do you think of emotion and beauty? And last night we were kind of green rooming that disassociation you mentioned, which was quite powerful. Yes. Um, Just a, a little question. Yeah. Team Tiny. Yeah. No, it's great. Um, so like I was saying, beauty for the sake of beauty is totally valid and like we need that too, you know, but um, it just gets, it, it can be a little shallow and overused and um, 
you know, especially in terms of, you know, I, I briefly worked in the modeling industry. So like concepts of, of beauty and just all of that kind of being jammed down your throat and like these Western standards, I mean, talking like physically, right. But, um, you know, the art that I'm trying to create is, is a bit more honest than that. And like honesty is where it's beautiful, I think, and where you can create something, um, you know, visceral and I'm trying to convey, it's so hard to talk about, right? I'm trying to convey um, an emotional quality. I'm trying to say, how does it feel? We know what it looks like. We know what beauty looks like, but what's happening underneath it all? How is your body carrying the stories? How is it like hanging on to trauma? You know, um, that kind of like a couple of years ago, actually I was in a yoga class and um, you know, I was very numbed out for a long time and just kind of like coasting through life and kind of like a bit, a bit like leaning into the masculine pretty hard and very hyper independent. Um, still something I struggle with, but, you know, not really stopping to feel much of what was happening to me at all in life. And um, I was in a yoga class and the teacher was talking about like hip openers and how you store your anger in your hips and like, mm. this will be a release and we're in pigeon and we're doing it. And all of a sudden I start sobbing. <laughs> I'm like, how is, you know, how is this happening? I, I don't cry, not in public. What is happening? But it was just like, wow, it's really locked in your body. And, and you know, I don't know you, but like you, I'm, gonna underline what you said i feel like you really don't cry in public like <laughs> that was a real release that was there's a lot there yeah yeah um yeah i kind of take on like the the tough guy mentality and just kind of get on with things and um yeah i'd never really stop to really process much so it's almost like i feel like in my 30s now i'm sort of i'm finally looking looking at, you know, the ways I've been carrying so much and I didn't even know it. And it serves a purpose, right? I think Brene Brown refers to it as body armor. And that's a really nice like visual and a physical thing to like a tangible thing to think about. It's like, you've got all this body armor on and it serves a purpose, right? It helps you survive um, whatever you've got to survive in life, whatever. But then you get to a certain point. For me, it's like right now. <laughs> and like, it's kind of hindering relationships. And I'm watching myself go through these same patterns over and over and just like beating my head against a wall. And it's like, oh, I've got to really shift something. Um, got to take off that armor. It's no longer serving you. Well said. And yeah, from, uh, you know, I was saying like w last night when we were sort of green rooming talking about what we would talk about today, mm -hmm. the introversion thing. Like often there's not a lot of comfort in being openly dramatic you might say in quotes but emotional just beautifully raw and vulnerable which are annoyingly like we were saying about authenticity kind of catchwords now thanks to people like Brene Brown and Pema Chodron and all these wonderful uh people but mm -hmm. the real vulnerability is often kind of ugly and kind of beautiful at the same time right yeah yeah it is and um being um being somebody who is pretty introverted like i i really crave solitude i do well there i also really but you know like a week in the studio and i'm i'm ready to see people again and but maybe for like two hours and yeah then, I love and then i'm that. like all right that's enough i'm gonna go stare at a wall now and you know de-stimulate um yeah i'm like but... the exact opposite <laughs> um you know i'm really i really need my like two hours of solitude and then i'm ready for a week of floating around like a butterfly having what people like yourself would view as incredibly irritating conversations <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it's it's not irritating if there's substance you know it's i don't know i think um i think there's a a lot of people think introverts are just shy they're just right. shy and like a little insecure and like everyone has insecurity of course but like i don't yeah. know speaking speaking plainly it's just like so much interaction uh stays very shallow very surface and it's monotonous and it's the same and it can be kind of painful um so i just i just don't really like care to engage in it but if if we're talking like we're going in like deep diving not snorkeling scuba diving then uh then you know you've kind of got my attention and um because I, I sort of i exist in my studio and in solitude like in a very analytical place all the time you know to a fault and um, yeah but you seem to have really clear, I mean, maybe that's just what happens as we get older, but very clear understanding of how you work, which is interesting, like that you rest in that analytical state of mind easily, but now you're, 
maybe I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it seems like you're saying you're transitioning into a more, you know, working with emotions and, and being comfortable taking off that body armor. Yeah. yeah, it's a whole new world, honestly. It's, um, it can be a lot like, and it, you know, definitely don't have it all figured out by any means. Um, but it's, it's a lot about, um, sort of losing, losing my train of thought here. I had it. Well, just that transition from like 20s to 30s to I'm in my 40s and, you know, getting more and more comfortable taking off the body armor and not even putting it back on to me is sort of the path. Yeah, yeah. It's this new identity altogether almost. And uh, things that once worked, they don't work anymore. And it's like, who am I now if I'm not like this like tough guy who's like got it figured out? Like, yeah. I'm not. I'm trying to be softer and I'm trying to like be more feminine and like find that balance because everyone's got to like they're on the spectrum somewhere like feminine and masculine. It's just like yeah. finding finding, you know, the balance for both. And, um, but you know, men obviously can, can and should be incredibly vulnerable and that's where genuine strength can rest. You know, it's always curious. Like when we talk about feminine and masculine, I feel like we're always put in this box of being independent or strong. And I'm like, I mean, I was brought up in Buddhism where we were like taught to be raw and gentle and open in a way, mm -hmm. but that was our strength. So, yeah, so yeah there's, um, there's a lot of strength and vulnerability. I yeah. mean, it's like the hardest thing yeah. to do. It's, yeah. it's the hardest thing to do. Like, it's oh. easy to just be like to lock up and like, not want to talk about any of it and just um, think you've got it figured out like that. That feels good. That's easy. Um, being vulnerable feels really painful, and, like real painful. Yeah. And I love, you know, bringing it back to the art. I, I love that we're just jumping into this because this is completely what to me, your art evokes. And I feel like that, you know, I don't, you know, I love a lot of different artists, um, local artists as well, just artists I've run into over the years. But um, that seems to be the exact medium that you're working in is this kind of path or conversation. Yeah, it's it's that visceral um, sort of e emotion. And, and for me, uh, English language can be a little limiting, right? Like, <clears throat> I mean, you know, you're, you're a master of it. You're you're a writer, you've, you've got a lot more, you know, you're very good at that. But for me, like, we only have like, what, four words for emotions, right? It's like, I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm angry. Yeah. It's just like, you know, other languages, which I'm not gonna pretend like I know, but right. they've got like right. words for these nuanced emotions, these really like complex emotions that take like two English sentences to describe. Mm. Um, <clears throat> That's so interesting. So sometimes, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So it just feels kind of limiting and it's hard to like explain because um, it is so complex and there's such like a massive world once I'm now that I'm kind of in it and like I'm starting to feel things that I really, you know, hadn't felt before and just ways of being vulnerable and um, just different, um, different emotions and claiming new spaces in, in my life. And um, yeah, it's just very interesting. And as I try to process that, I'm try trying to communicate that, I think. Mm -hmm. So art is... Art's an expression, of course, but it's also like a communication. It's a language, really. It's a vocabulary. Um, and, you know, I like to think that it's very important because, like, when you've been at your lowest low, um, you know, maybe you've read something or you've, like, read a, read a poem or, like, you heard a line in, in music or you, like, saw a piece of artwork and... It, and you're like, holy shit, someone else has thought that before. Mm -hmm. Someone else has felt that before. And I thought I was alone in that completely. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really powerful. And it can make you feel like you're not alone. And like, there is, you know, some hope. And um, I just think there's it's a very powerful thing. And, you know, if you if you think art's not that important, which sometimes, for example, our school systems like to kick that first, right? And, you know, music, we don't need that. We don't need dance. We don't need art. But it's like try having gotten through the pandemic without your video games without your music without your books like you would have lost your goddamn mind so it's it's very um it's 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 vital really uh i think and you know it i'm hopeful that that like like there will be one person to connect with a piece in such a way that um that made that makes it worth it makes it you know oh it does matter you know because sometimes you i'm creating wall coverings you know sometimes i'm like what what is all of this even matter what does it mean 
Tell me about a moment like that where, where you could see it matter to someone and like so, how that felt. Yeah, so like I've had very various comments over the years about what the, the, the art evokes in people. And, um, you know, I've had people say, oh, it reminds me of a car accident victim or like, you know, it's kind of like disturbing for them, which is great in its own yeah. way. Like it's like good, it you feel something. Um, that doesn't, that's not offensive at all. Like I love to hear that. Something that really just like hit for me was this woman commented on a piece and it was like one of the first really like, I don't know, body sort of flaying, uh, you know, energetic paint kind of flying off the body paintings. Hmm. And this woman said, I just had chemo and this is exactly what it feels like. Oof. And uh, I just like, I sent her a print of that painting. Um, I, it just was so amazing that that somebody could could see it and, and understand like could relate to it in, in a feeling because that's what it is it's not intellectual like we intellectualize everything i mean i certainly do um getting into the body is a lot harder and for her to get that just from seeing it on instagram on a tiny screen you know mm. it was just like oh shit this this is for something then mm. and uh, connected with her in some way so that was very cool yeah you're literally I mean, you talked about the arts in schools and stuff. I think the arts literally save people's lives um, as well as our emotional lives in many mo different moments. Um, you know, I know when you said, you know, that feeling when you, in my case, when I read something when I was like 18 or 17 or something and I was, had, my heart was broken for the first time and I had gone off to college and I read this Jack Kerouac book the town and the town and the city and um he wrote about that sort of young love and that broken heart from an emotional point of view not just telling it and um it really was that profound and also sort of very simple and almost simplistic realization where you're like oh other people mm -hmm. go through this depth of like epic suffering that it was for me then and yeah. and it transformed the whole experience somehow into not feeling alone which sometimes is all we need yeah it's simple it doesn't have to be complex you know yeah. and um that in itself is a form of community because what's community right it's like being seen being heard um finding your people which is hard to do as we get older you know and even i don't know um it's kind of a whole other tangent but you know growing up as um from a very female perspective like it it was it's always been very very hard to uh to find female friendship um we're sort of trained to compete with each other you know um there's a, a limited seating at, at the table whether it's like sports whether it's you know business or like academics and like mm -hmm. it's a really male driven table usually and you know we all learn pretty quick oh we've got to like heighten the masculine tendencies in ourselves in order to have a seat at this table and um again this is you know this is like a whole other conversation but it's just been i just went like a long time not realizing how much i needed female friendship and needed you know um to lean into the feminine back to that and um but it's it's hard for a lot of people and i think um comparison is like the enemy of connection right and like all we fucking do is compare to each other on these platforms <laughs> it's just like Look how cool my life is. Look what I do. Look what I made. Look at like, you know, like my makeup. Like it's, it's just a big comparison game. And it's just so hard to, um, when we place so much value on the externals, like, and not really cultivating like value in ourselves um, in other ways or realize we have value in other ways. It's how else, how, how are you going to connect with people on any real level? And um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot there, but community, um is just is just so important and i try to contribute to it in you know the small ways that i can considering i prefer to be alone most of the time <laughs> yeah but that's i mean we talked about that last night a bit or in dms but like that again you know i may sort of make my living through media and social media that's my medium and it's something obviously i have a lot of a love hate relationship with and watching your reels and all that um it felt very uh, fun and, 
but also emotional, you know, depending on the one and the music and the poem and, you know, the layering of these different uh, art forms. It was really, it was a good, it felt like a connecting, like you said, that word connection, like comparison is the thief of connection, I think you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like your social media and especially those events felt like um, you were able to make your art a connection with people instead of just competing or trying to get sales or trying to get followers. It felt emotional in a, in a really sane, kind, raw way, like not just emotional in a melodramatic Bravo TV kind of way, you know? That's really cool to hear. And, and especially coming from you, I appreciate that a lot because we all know how much effort the reels take, you know, it's like a whole new world, a whole nother task, a whole nother thing you need like another person for, but we're all doing it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I put like no effort into them.